So welcome back to the sawmill, friends. We got a log truck pulling up. Let's go see what he's got. You guys hang in there. guys a pretty good load right there most of it is white pine i think these are eight and ten footers some pretty good saw logs right there though we'll get some good lumber out of those if i was guessing maybe five or six hundred board feet of white pine maybe more they all look usable this one right here does have a lot of knots on it but we'll get something out of it these are low-grade white pine logs that probably came from somebody's front yard, but that's okay because we did save them from going to the landfill today, guys, and that's always good. But the real good log is right there in the middle. Check this out. This is tulip poplar, and this is the bottom of the tree, and for you guys out there that are new to this, you can always tell that when a logger or a tree service brings you a log like this because you can see the wedge right there, the face cut, rather. You see there's the face cut and there's his back cut and the hinge wood right there in the middle. When you see that, you always know that's the part of the log or the tree that was on the ground. So this is the stump right here. And judging by the colors right there that you can see on the end grain, there could be some mineral in this log, which means rainbow poplar. And over here is the second log and it's got a little bit of a curve to it, but we'll get something out of it also. And it's got more purple in it than the other one. That one right there looks pretty good. Now this poplar is a pretty good sized log. It's an eight footer, the diameter on the operator's side or the large end, that sounds a lot better. Looks to be about 30 inches, but this log does have one problem. Let's take a look at the other side of it. So down here on the other end is our problem. And right there it is, a pretty good sized void right there in the middle of this poplar log. Now most sawmills are just about every commercial sawmill would turn this away if it came to their yard or they would throw it in the pulpwood pile. You would never see a log like this go on the mill at a commercial location. But a small bandsaw location like myself can actually get some value out of a log like this because we can go around that void, which is right there in the middle. So that's the pith, which I usually get rid of anyways. Even though we do have that void right there in the middle, we should be able to saw around that and get a decent amount of lumber out of this log. So it's not the best log in the world. I wish that void wasn't there, but I would not reject the log like this because I know there's a lot of good lumber all around that void. So that's the only problem with this log. And other than that, it's a nice big poplar. There's a lot of lumber in that log. I'll probably take this up to the sawmill Saturday and see what we can get out of it. And in case you're wondering what day it is, today's Wednesday. And I'm not sure when you guys will see this video. I'm totally behind on filming this week. But maybe at least by Saturday, if it don't rain, we'll have this on the mill. Maybe Friday, I don't know. We've got a lot going on at the end of this week. i got a load of cherry coming in. I think on Friday, a tandem load of uh, wild cherry. That's a customer log or customer logs, say it plural, sounds a whole lot better. They should be here on Friday. They were gonna to come today, but I had too much going on, told them to wait till Friday. So uh, yeah, maybe by this weekend, we'll get that poplar on there. And that pine right there, we're gonna turn into siding so we could finish up putting siding on the chicken house. I need to do that. I've been meaning to do that for the past year and I keep on putting it off. All right, friends, the first thing I need to do today, uh, hello there, mama cat. She don't come up to the house very much often. I wonder what she's doing up here. She's probably hungry. So anyways, the first thing we need to do today on my list of, I guess, chores here at the farm is I need to wash off my four-wheeler. I just had this serviced about a month ago, and the only thing they did not do was give it a proper bath, so I guess that's up to me. I got my steel pressure washer out here. This shouldn't take very long. But I need to do two things to it after we get it cleaned up. The first thing I need to do is put the sprayer back on the rear of it because I need to spray some weeds today. And I also need to assemble a new basket that mounts on the back of it. I've had this basket for probably three years, maybe longer than that. 
and I'm not sure why I'm not putting it on the four wheeler yet, but I was moving it around the other day and I thought to myself, I have moved this thing out of my way probably a million times in the past two or three years. Maybe it's time to finally use it. So we're gonna put that together. That won't take just a few minutes and put everything on the four wheeler and start spraying some weeds because I am way behind on chores here at the farm this spring. And it will be summer in what? Almost a month. So uh, I'm way behind guys, I need to catch up. But don't go anywhere because I know I got a lot of farm chores to do today, but we're gonna be running the sawmill also. Friends got her cleaned up, looks a whole lot better. I've probably not gave this thing a wash in about four or five years. And now we're gonna put the rack on the back of it, but I'm not gonna bore you guys with that. So let me see if this still works. Yep, still works. That looks pretty good. I'm not sure why I waited this long to put that on there. Now we'll put the sprayer on it and go spray some weeds and then we'll head up to the sawmill.
All right, guys, I guess I'm done for the day. I did some stuff off camera that I didn't really show you guys because I wasn't sure how it was gonna go. So down on the timber frame, I've been trying to figure out a way to close in the soffits on the outside. I had some sheet metal bent and I covered it up with that about a month ago, actually probably two months ago, but it looked horrible to be honest with you. So I took that off and I actually got some vinyl soffits and I started covering it with that like you would have on a regular house. And I think it looks pretty good. Here's a couple of pictures of what I did today. And the reason I didn't video it was I wasn't sure if I could remember how to do it. So in the last house that we lived in, we had vinyl siding put up and I helped those guys do a lot of the work. And actually, after sitting there and staring at these soffits and trying to figure out what to do, I remembered how to install them. So that looked pretty good, but I didn't video it because I didn't know how it was gonna go, to be honest with you. But I need to finish about 16 more feet of soffit on the front and 30 on the back. And I'll probably video that cause now I kind of remember how to do that and it went pretty well. So that's probably all I got for today. I spent more time than I thought spraying weeds and spraying the driveway off and just down by the mailbox, you know, all those places like that. I spent about four hours doing that. And uh, there's a lot of stuff here to spray. I tell you what, I didn't even touch around the sawmill or the bat fence line or around the swimming pool. All those places needed also, but I ran out of the uh, concentrate that you pour in there. So I gotta get some more of that. So I think we're done for the day, friends. I appreciate everybody watching. I really appreciate everybody supporting me here on the channel. And in case you were wondering, on the sawmill today, that was a Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7. If you want those blades, friends, you know what to do. Give Joe a phone call. His cell phone number is down in the video description. And the reason I do that in every single video is because people continue to email me and send me DMs on Instagram and on Facebook you know, you talk about your blades, where are you getting them at? So I'm trying to help people out so they'll know where to get their blades at. Give Joe Main a phone call. Cell phone number is always down in the video description. So thanks for watching, friends. I really appreciate it. We'll see you guys back here tomorrow. I need to saw up a bunch more cedar. And speaking of cedar, uh, before we go here, last week I asked you guys on the new uh, shed where the fuel tank's going to go, I gave you three choices, pine, cedar, or the burnt pine. I'm not gonna to try to say that again. I butcher it every time I try to say it. It looks like everybody pretty much wanted cedar. So that's what we're gonna do. And I'll probably start sawing that up this weekend. And I gotta order some metal also to put on top of that. And I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about doing an A-frame instead of doing a lean-to and building my own trusses. I've never built my own trusses before, but I think it's probably not that difficult. This little building's only gonna be 12 by six, so it's not like it's a, a full barn or nothing like that, but I don't know. Any of you guys out there ever built your own trusses, leave me a comment below, and I'll probably get on YouTube and try to find some videos on that. I'm sure somebody's already done it. It's, it's like anything else. If you looked on Google or YouTube and you're trying to figure out how to do something, nine times out of 10, or actually 10 times out of 10, you can find it on there and somebody's either videoed it or put it in a forum or something. So that's what we're gonna do on the frame back here. We're gonna do a small timber frame with an A-frame roof out of Eastern Red Cedar. And I'll probably use pine to sheath the roof and black metal for the roof. So uh, that's what we're gonna do. So thanks for watching guys, I really appreciate it. We'll see you back here tomorrow.